Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. I'm delighted to see you all here today. Equally delighted to have you joining us online, those of you that are worshiping with us that way today. Special word of welcome to visitors in both places. We are particularly grateful for your presence with us and hope that you find this time of worship together to be meaningful. It's a special day in the life of the church. Not only is it Pentecost Sunday, but it is also Graduate Recognition Sunday where we will uh, honor and celebrate the achievement of two of our uh, young people who are making that transition from high school on to other things in life. So uh, we're very grateful for Miriam and Robert and look forward to uh, celebrating that more with them later in the service. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask Jim Tack to come forward for a minute of permission. We have a special offering collected today. Yeah, today we will be collecting the Pentecost special offering Pentecost is the birthday of the church. The Holy Spirit connects us to the past, inspires the present, and looks towards the future. The Pentecost offering supports programs for our children, youth, and young adults, helping them to grow up to proclaim the good news. 40% of the Pentecost offering is retained here at First Presbyterian Church. 25% goes to a program called Youth Adult Volunteers. That's a, an ecumenical program which is a faith-based program for uh, adult, young adults aged 19 to 30 uh, to volunteer a year of service around the U.S. and around the world. For instance, Akila Hiram spent a year serving in a health clinic in the Philippines and is now pursuing a career in the medical field because of that program. A foundation of faith established during childhood hel helps us to ensure lifelong faith and service. The patterns and lessons established during those formative years continue throughout a person's life. Last week I told you that the Pentecost offering is directed at the, at the youth and that it, and it is really about the future of the church. Having considering, considered the events and the shootings and the violence in the, uh, this United States and around the world in these last couple of weeks, I think I think it's broader than just the church. I think it's about developing uh, citizens and uh, <clears throat> members of society uh, that go far beyond the church. Um, I just think that had some of those people who have committed those acts uh, been involved in programs like the programs that are supported by the Pentecost offering, I kind of think that maybe those situations might have turned out differently. Anyway, I think that there's no better way that I can spend my money than developing and <clears throat> encouraging and supporting uh, ch my children and the children of the church and young adults. And I hope you uh, join me in uh, supporting this very wor worthwhile program. Thank you. We also have two adult Sunday school offerings going on during the summer months, so I'd like to ask Blaine to come forward for a word about the first one. Good morning. The uh, pastor's Sunday school class and the New Beginning Sunday school class are meeting together this summer, and we invite anyone else uh, to come join us. We are watching The Chosen, uh, season one of that series. Uh, if you didn't make it today and would like to come, you are more than welcome to uh, because you can watch it online for free and then come next week and we're going to discuss it. So this is a uh, dramatization of the life of Jesus and fills in some of the gaps. It's all based on uh, biblical, the biblical scriptures and the gospels. And so, but it doesn't, you know, we don't know the details. We know that Jesus of healed Mary Magdalene. We find that out in Luke 8, verses 1 through 3. But there's nothing that tells us how Jesus and Mary Magdalene may have connected. Where did they meet? So this is an idea that might have been the case. We don't know that that's actually the case. Nobody does because it's not written down any place. But anyway, if you would like to join us, I'll be around after church. I can tell you how to find The Chosen so you could watch it this week and come join us next week. We'll be doing this uh, for the eight to 10 weeks of the summer. Uh, and so we hope that uh, if you have questions or interests, you'll come join us. Oh, and one more thing, Eucharistic visitors. There's an updated version in my mailbox in the hallway 
of the uh, service. So you may want to pick one of those up out of my mailbox. Thank you, Blaine. And Richard Hatcher for a word about the Evergreen class. Thank you. Uh, Becky is going to start off, Becky Walden starts off Sunday with a discussion of spiritual bypassing, which I had to look up. It has to do with the tendency to use spiritual practices to avoid uh, addressing our emotional issues. Should be very interesting. Uh, the following week, then Rachel Morse is going to lead a discussion on inclusiveness and use of pronouns. We're not going to meet the 4th of July weekend, which would be July 3rd, but we'll come back then for a couple of weeks with Nancy Meyer leading a discussion uh, based on webcasts or podcasts by Nadia Bolts Weber. She's a, a contemporary Lutheran pastor with very interesting sermons, and we will be watching and discussing some of her ideas. So join us, and that's just June and July. Come and see what's going on in August. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple more words about worship today. <clears throat> Following worship, since it is Graduate Recognition Sunday, uh, instead of greeting people uh, in the back, I'll be at the side door uh, and would encourage you to exit the sanctuary that way and spend some time in the reception center, uh, which is through the first set of double doors on your left uh, for a catered reception in honor of our graduates. So I hope that you'll take time uh, to wish them well. Also, thanks be to God, we will be celebrating communion today, uh, and you'll be invited to come forward during that time. Uh, we have pre-sliced pieces of bread, and so you will be pre uh, handed uh, a piece of bread, and then you'll be presented a tray that will have the small communion cups uh, in it. And so you're asked to consume the bread, uh, take one of the cups, consume the juice, and then if you'll just place uh, your empty cup and think of these as receptacles, not trays. We're not trying to restack things, but just place your empty cup in the tray on your way back to your seat. Uh, that is the way we will celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper today. Finally, it is my sad duty to announce the sympathy of the congregation is extended to Shirley Rainey and family upon the death of Reverend Ralph Rainey, a former associate pastor of First Presbyterian from 1971 until 1979, who died on May 26th. Uh, please keep Shirley and the Rainey family in your prayers uh, during this time of loss. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise now in body or spirit, however you're comfortable, and join me in the call to worship. The word of the Lord to the prophet, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old shall dream dreams and your young shall see visions. Let us worship God.
please join me now in the prayer of the day. God, our creator, earth has many languages, but your gospel proclaims your love to all nations in one heavenly tongue. Make us messengers of the good news that through the power of your spirit, all the world may unite in one song of praise through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating old tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak of the good news of your love, or live as people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we are called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. If I could have the young disciples come forward for discovery time. Good morning, everyone. Hey, what's up, my friend? <laughs> All right. So, how many of you? I have a question. How many of you have ever seen the wind? Raise your hand. If you've seen the wind. Amelia, you've seen the wind? 
What did it look like? Yeah, that is her name. Good job. What did the wind look like? Do you remember? Swirly white lines. Okay. That is her name. You have a very good memory, my friend. How many, Olivia, did you raise your hand? Have you seen the wind? What did it look like? The wind? You're pointing at your grandmother? She's the wind? <laughs> Very cool. Wow, these are not the answers I was anticipating when I came up with this question that quite honestly is supposed to be a trick question, but now I'm unsure. <laughs> um, what's up, Amelia? It looks like AC. Yeah, it looks like air conditioning. Interesting. I'm not sure what that looks like either. This is kind of a trick question, and let me explain to you why I thought I was super smart when I came up with this question. The wind is not something that we necessarily see, right? But it is something that we know is there, right? I don't know what the weather is tomorrow. He has no idea what the weather is tomorrow. I guarantee you, though, because we live in Oklahoma, there will be wind. But we know that the wind is there because we can feel it on our skin, right? We can see it move through the trees, right? And the wind does some pretty amazing things, but I have to admit, I am not the biggest fan of the wind. I have even used words as strong as hatred to describe my feelings for the wind, especially in this state. But when it is not blowing 30 miles an hour, the wind can provide like a nice breeze in the summer, right? It can move wind turbines and give us energy and electricity to power houses and buildings and all kinds of cool stuff. And it is raining today. The wind is probably blowing the rain around, right? And the reason I'm talking about the wind is because it is a very special day. I'll get to your hand in a second, Olivia. I see it. The reason I'm talking about the wind today is because it's a very special day in the life of the church. You may have noticed all of the red around. And that is because today is a day called Pentecost. Can you guys say Pentecost? Pentecost. And tomorrow you have school. Can you say Pentecost? That was really close. That was really good. Pentecost is a day in which we talk about the Holy Spirit. And as Presbyterians, the Holy Spirit is not something we spend a whole lot of time on, right? We talk about Jesus a lot. We talk about God the Father a lot. But we don't spend a whole lot of time on the Holy Spirit. But it's very important to today. And the reason I bring up the wind is because when I think of the Holy Spirit, I am reminded of... He can see anything when he closes his eyes and probably the Holy Spirit too. <laughs> I'm reminded of the wind when I think of the Holy Spirit, right? I can't touch the Holy Spirit, right? I can't grab it and hold on to it, but I can feel it. I can feel it move through me, right? Just like I can feel the wind. I can't see the Holy Spirit, right? But I can see it move through other people like the wind moves through the trees, right? And so I want you guys to think, next time you're in a giant Oklahoma windstorm, once you get out of it and have a second to breathe in the shelter of a home or a building, Think about the Holy Spirit and how it's moving through you and moving through other people just like the wind. I'm going to have to answer these questions when we get, or later, after we're done, because we're running out of time. <laughs> okay. All right. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the wind. And thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to comfort us guide us, and live within us. And we pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. You guys can walk over to the door to go upstairs.
Let us pray. Loving God, by your Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The scripture reading is from Acts, chapter 1 and from chapter 2. So, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of the Lord. Shout your praise. 
lives. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will I invited our seniors to come forward, but I didn't really leave a good break in the service to do that. Would you like to? I'm going to talk about you either way. So, okay, good. So today is Pentecost Sunday. We've come to the end of the seven-week season of Easter, a week of Sundays. During that time, the church acclaims the resurrection of Christ by the power of God. On the day of Pentecost, the day that we remember today, God gave the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower individuals to go share the story. The Holy Spirit is what empowers believers to go bear witness to the resurrection. The book of Acts tells the story of Pentecost and then continues the story of the outcome of Pentecost's new creation. People who live their lives showing the world what the risen Christ means through their words, and through their actions. Luke's narrative describes not just the birth of the church, but something much more personal than that, the empowerment of believers to bear witness to the ends of the earth. First, there was what Luke calls a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. Then there were what looked like tongues of fire. Finally, God filled Jesus' disciples with the Holy Spirit so that they began to talk in all sorts of foreign languages. One spoke Parthian, another Latin. Some even managed Egyptian and Arabic. We can picture Jews from all over the known world hearing what was going on and slowly filling all the doorways, all the windowsills in that one place as scripture describes it. A bunch of untrained Galileans 
were telling about God's power in languages that left no one out. One important part of the birth story of Pentecost is the way Pentecost's Holy Spirit transforms Jesus' disciples. On Pentecost, slow to understand, timid disciples become utterly fearless leaders. They had freed themselves of the need for secret rooms and locked doors. The danger was ever present more than ever, but the fear in the face of that danger was managed. Jesus' disciples proclaimed the gospel in front of both large crowds and dangerous authorities. And remember what happens next. Remember what happens after Pentecost. Empowered by the Spirit, they heal sick people. They exercise demons. Jesus' disciples go to jail gladly where they sing hymns that shake their prison's very foundations. Miriam, Robert, you're going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting for God in your lifetime. Old people can't help but do the math. And so 34 years ago, when I was sitting in your shoes, literally a generation, ouch, ago, I think about how the world has changed. The burden that you carry, that my generation didn't at that time, was that we have moved to a place in our society, in our culture, and in our world, where there are many, many members of it that don't recognize what we all grew up thinking of as the God-shaped hole inside of us. Something within us that could only be filled by something outside of us. Something that was holy and something that is sacred. Well, in what they call secular three society now, it seems that money is the true God of our culture and that people don't even recognize the need for that transcendent experience, don't recognize what they're missing inside of themselves. They feel like if they earn enough money, they can figure out everything else inside their brain. They leave little space or no room at all for what is sacred. That is the world that you guys are living in. So you must work in your lifetime in unprecedented ways to retell the story of our faith, or of what Jesus Christ means in the world where everything changes all the time. I could stand here and I could lament the problems of our lives and of the world, but we all know the world that we live in. And we know the state of it this very day. What is more important, I think, is for me to stand here and say thank you. Thank you for being the future of the church. But not only that, thank you for being its present. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Robert, for the way you give yourself to us through all the different ways, but particularly in sharing your God-given gift of music. What the world needs now, as much as anything, is for shallow faith to find depth. And the things that nurture the seeds of faith that allows it to take root in our hearts, in the hearts of believers, and then continues to sustain the plant that springs forth are transcendent experiences. Transcendent experiences bring perspective and abandon the conceit that we are at the center of the world. Through them, we can experience union with something larger than our understanding. We remember that because of Jesus Christ, God is approachable 
to us. Yet at the same time, we must stand in reverence before a God who is beyond us in every sense. That's what architecture, stained glass, the art in all its different ways, that brings us to these moments of being carried outside of ourselves through something of beauty. Music does that for people. Music puts fuel back in the tanks of faith that has become empty over the week. It reminds us of who we are. It reminds us of what we believe. And often, music speaks most powerfully when no words are spoken at all. So I don't just say that we look with anticipation for God's plan for your life. We do, but I also say to you, don't stop. Don't stop being the Christians that you already are. Don't stop sharing your gifts so that it might strengthen the faith of those that are around you. Don't stop and don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you are breathed on by the Spirit in new and different ways that you have never even thought of or imagined as God continues to breathe on you throughout your life as you grow into different levels of service and understanding and stewardship. Thank you for your lives. Amen. I'd now like to invite Robert and Miriam to come forward and their families to join them just down front on the tile, please. And Puffer, if you will come as well. Just down on the floor is fine. How about right in front of the table here? Why don't you go over there, Bobby Mill or Robert? We'll have room. Okay. Oh my goodness, I just made the big faux pas. When I first came here several years ago, it was at a time where Robert would be introduced to me as Bobby, but we can't call him Bobby anymore. He's Robert now. And so, Robert, you have been burdened and blessed with growing up in this fellowship, having uh, this congregation watch you uh, grow through the years and, and have known you um, as a child, but now also recognize you as the man uh, you have become. And um, what I learned of you most clearly uh, was from your grandfather. And when I think about uh, the relationship that I saw there and the love that was reflected, that told me a lot um, that Bobby was gone and Robert uh, is on the scene. So uh, I cherish the person that you have grown to be uh, and how you carry yourself in this world. Miriam, like myself, we're fairly newcomers to this fellowship, but what I admire about you so much is how you um, hmm, burst onto the scene, I think, with you and your family uh, to be serenaded by the lusty ladies coming through the halls on Sunday mornings. It's a wonderful way uh, to be able to start your day if you're a pastor. And you jumped into the ministry of this church and the life of this church with both feet. And so I appreciate uh, your way of not being a spectator, uh, but being a full participant uh, in the life and ministry of this church. And I wanted to invite Puffer to say a few words, um, yeah, if you don't mind, too, since music has been a big part of your life here. Sorry to be behind you, yeah. I'm at my spot. Um, Turn around if you want. I, I just want to echo the words that John has said. Um, and as I said to you earlier, it's been a great joy for me to share the gifts of music that the two of you have brought. Um, and for us as a congregation, uh, it's been, I think, wonderful to see these two young people grow uh, and develop their, their personhood and develop their skills. And, and um, I think something special about Miriam and Robert, they both contributed to our, our children and youth music programs in the treble choir and the youth chorale, um, but they both also taken on the reins of being part of our adult music program, um, being part of the choir, of the handbells, and that testifies a lot to their musical skill, of course, but I think a lot to their maturity. 
and, uh, and it, it speaks a lot about the kinds of people you are uh, and the commitment you have to this church and to your congregation. Um, and I'm really grateful to um, have gotten to know you over these last few years, and I can't wait to see the wonderful things that you do in the years to come. Thank you. All right. And as Presbyterians, we would like to mark this occasion with a, a laying on of hands by the officers of the church. So I'd like to invite elders and deacons uh, ordained in this or any other Presbyterian church USA to come forward for that, as well as any ministers of the word and sacrament that might be present with us today. I would encourage you to bring your bulletin for the litany, though, if you can. Sorry. Ooh, I never saw so many people go in reverse. Thank you. <laughs> The congregation, please rise in body or spirit, however you're comfortable, and join me in the graduation litany of Thanksgiving. We are gathered together to celebrate a milestone in the lives of members of our community. As you begin another phase of life that will likely take you to both imagined and unimagined places, we hope that you remember the ones in this place who have loved and supported you throughout the years. Use your memories of what you have learned in this place as a beacon to guide you on your path. Look back fondly, but continue only forward, always looking for God's next new thing in your life. Let us give thanks to the Lord for the families and homes into which these graduating seniors were born and have been nurtured. Let us give thanks for our children and our parents, our homes and families, where we learn to grow and experience all the wonders of this life. Loving God, we give you thanks that your Holy Spirit is with Robert and Miriam and will strengthen them as they take on new responsibilities in this world. Give them us faith and encouragement as we try to be your servants who live in joy and thankfulness for all we have received. Amen.
Thank you. Please return to your seats. Again, I hope you can join us following worship in the reception center so we can give them a proper hello. Friends, Jesus invites to this table everyone who wants to experience God's love, receive God's grace and God's peace, and join hearts with Jesus' followers here and everywhere around the globe. All who will come, find strength for your journey of faith. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is right and good and joyful to give thanks to you in every place and in every moment. You created the world full of beauty and abundance, and you formed us in your image, filling us with your breath of life so we might experience the joys of being in relationship with you and each other. When our love for you and one another fell short, and when our world is broken apart by mistrust and fear, you still love us. Through your prophets, you gave us hope as in the promise of a world that is united in love and in service. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we sing to your holy name and forever will sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. He came into the world at a particular time and in a particular place but he shared news that is good and joyful for people in all times and in all places, the good news about your coming kingdom. He broke down the barriers that keep people from knowing and loving each other. He reached out to all those who were cast out of society and proclaimed through his very life the extent of the kingdom as it is being revealed over our world. We remember on the night before he was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it. He shared it with them saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup, pouring out the wine, he said, this is the new covenant, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Eat this bread, drink this wine, do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup so that we, as we share them, may experience the power of Christ, power to make his body here in this community of faith and with others throughout the world, united in love, mission, and ministry, until the glorious day when all barriers will be broken and your love will reign in every heart. All glory and honors are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, the body of our Lord, broken for you. And the cup of our Lord, shed for you.
earlier in the service that there is gluten-free bread available in the middle of the table on the small plate. The gifts of God for the people of God, all who will, come.
Unfortunately, our table fellowship does not stand here, but uh, extends beyond the walls of this service, thanks to our Eucharistic visitors. So I'd like to invite them to come forward uh, for their commissioning at this time. Friends, please join me. In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We are one body because we all share one bread, one Let us pray. Gracious God, what a joy it is to be able to come together and celebrate this your sacred meal together. Please bless us uh, to continue depths of devotion in our daily lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The church has different ways to receive your pledges, tithes, and offerings. If you are worshiping with us in the sanctuary, offering plates are located by the doors as you exit the sanctuary. Please drop your offering in the plate. If you are worshiping with us from home today, you could support us through Venmo, search for FPC OKC through the website, click the button on the home page, or you can mail your contribution to the church. Thank you for your support of the ministry of First Presbyterian. Now, let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us worship God with our pledges, tithes, and offerings.
Let us pray. We give these gifts freely and gratefully. We dedicate these gifts to your glory and to the work of this congregation, weaving a tapestry of compassion and action, faith and fellowship, hope and wholeness. Amen. So I charge you to go out from this place and continue living in the midst of God's purpose for your life. And as you do, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make the light of his face to shine upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <coughs>